Right, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning. Who knows what time you're watching this video? It's a, uh, another episode of Tala Teams. We're welcome. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate you clicking and watching this video today. It's an honor really to have you here. And as you know, we have various interviews on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, that I mean, and with different people from different walks of life, and uh, so that we can actually bring to the fore to understand that, you know what, your perspective matters as well. And today we have a guest, a special guest, a home girl of mine, Miss Cindy Svanda. How are you, Miss Cindy? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Ah, I'm great, I'm great, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a privilege and honor, really. We met, uh, we're doing Kananis and all those games for the youth and stuff. <laughs> and you were playing netball, I think, but your team used to lose every year. Yeah, no, 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 it's actually the other way around. <laughs> we're actually the champions. <laughs> we are always winning. <laughs> So, but I think as you know, of course, I just got a book uh, about a year and a half ago in our fatherhood, which I think has done well, leading some of these conversations that we're having now. And I'm talking to a lot, uh, it's of course father and sons, and as you can imagine, I've had a lot of conversations with fathers and sons, but I think we've tried to extend that now to say, how do we speak to mothers, or bring them back to the conversation, how to speak to daughters, you know, and aunties, so they can also understand this dynamic and help to improve upon that relationship. And I think in regard with that, when you look back on your own particular personal life, how would you describe the relationship with your father as being? Sure, it has been an amazing relationship, I should say. Because um, even on this day, my father still calls me my favorite girl. So whenever I get home, he says, oh, there comes my favorite girl. So I would say there has been that good relationship with him. And how has that uh, been put in a special box? Has the favorite girl done to you? What has that done to your life and the person that you are, you think? Uh, well, honestly, I am what I am because of my father. So growing up, my mom left. Okay, yeah. So basically, we grew up with our dad uh, for a very long time. So he is. I am what I am because of him, his teachings, and everything. A lot that I've learned, I've learned it from him. So yeah, there has been that special relationship, even also with my brothers. They've they've always treated me as the girl in the family. Are you the only girl in the family? No, no, no. We are two, but I'm the last one. Oh, okay, the last one. So you've got last one ten minutes. Say that. So with that, uh, do you remember round about the time that your mom left? How old you were, perhaps, by any chance? Sure. All I can say is I was in grade four. Okay. Yes. It was probably eleven. Okay. Yeah. And then I think now having a male parent only exclusively, did you find that a bit awkward perhaps or did you end up getting a lot of masculine uh, teachings that when you went to school perhaps you find I'm not, I'm not, there's, there's, there's a gap, there's, there's a missing, did you see anything different about the, in that relation? Well, there wasn't anything different because um, my father was that person who when he would come into a room, everyone would be, oh, okay, there he comes. Like, he's a well-respected man, and now that he's a full-time pastor also. So, um, I always looked up to him. So, there was that thing to say, okay, when I'm with my father, no one can do anything to me. You know, there was that type of relationship. Even when we would go out, he would always pick me and say, let's go. So by that, it also boosted my confidence in a way. Okay. Yeah. And, and what, what, what would you say perhaps is the greatest thing, outside of course of the confidence issue, mm -hmm. that you have picked up from that close relationship and close bond that you had with your dad? Well, it's obviously love. He loved all of us, but yeah, it was obvious to all of them that he loved me more <laughs> than all of them. So yeah, um, I think I learned how to love from my father. Yeah. He was very overprotective of me. Yeah. Did that not uh, play a disadvantage in trying to find a man, perhaps because you were so much <laughs> in the bad daddy bubble? Well, I think it still is. <laughs> yeah, but well, not not in a bad way. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, the right man will come along the way, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I think, uh, when, when you now contrast, when, when you're looking at what you desire and want in a man, do you see that linking up much with what your father is like? I'll ask you why I say that because from a psychological perspective, they kind of say uh, when a girl is looking for a man, they tend to look for a caricature or a copy somewhat of what their father was like. Do, do, is that true for you, you think? 
in some aspects, yes, I'll say that because um, he, we, we knew that growing up, we are secure around my father. So obviously, we want that security from a man. And then, uh, when he was too, he was overprotective. I wouldn't want that, <laughs> obviously. So yeah, but he always made sure that we had everything that we wanted. He used to provide for us, and he would instill these teachings that um, we are still holding on to okay. even today. So yeah, they are more or less um, those characteristics more than the disadvantages. So yeah, I would say, yeah, I look at that a lot. <laughs> and, and looking, I think, from, from your friends, potentially your circle, and uh, they are husbands or boyfriends or men in their lives, do you see a lot that, that resembles perhaps what you would want uh, taking obviously from the father and comparing and contrasting to the men that you're seeing around yourself? Is, is, is it the, the model that you would say this is the best version of a man, a father, a husband that they are, you would say? Yes, well, a lot of my friends, they are Christians, so growing up in a Christian background, I think that's what, um, that's how I choose my circle of friends sure. also. So uh, for me, one thing that stands is a relationship with God. So if you have a relationship with God, then everything else, it's, it's secondary. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you so. say that you, your dad is a pastor, so I take it you're looking for a pastor as well. Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not looking for a pastor. <laughs> no, no, but he must be someone that just got that relationship with mm -hmm. God. Yeah. So I think now looking forward, looking forward now, say you've got the man, you've got a marriage, you settled down. Mm -hmm. What's the main thing, I think, or main things that you want to see in that person as they give to your kids what you have gotten, for example, from your dad? Oh, okay. Um, I would say obviously the relationship with God mentioned that and someone that is open minded, someone who will understand that the times that we are living in are obviously different uh, from the times that our kids are going to live in. Yeah. So someone should be open-minded and whatever teachings that they are going to instill on the kids, um, they are going to be teachings that are going to help them in the near future yeah. as well. Yeah. Alright, so the, is, is there some of these teaching types that you think are really practical for you uh, that you would want to specifically say, I cannot do without this? Sure, not that I can think of, yeah, yeah. but um, sure, yeah, T kids need to be taught how to respect. Yeah. Yes, and they need to be taught how to appreciate. Sure. There is nothing so frustrating like a person who doesn't appreciate. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are some of the teachings that like, you need to teach a child to give them something they must learn to say thank you. You know, those small, small, small things, they will go a long way. Uh, I know uh, from, from the games that you, know, you played in the uh, sports event that we had uh, with the churches, there was a lot of fights that took place, you know, some girls are fighting because, oh, it's our match or this referee is favoring that, etc. Et Do you think potentially, you know, when you look at your relationship with your dad and the respect that you've got for him and how you learn to respect other people, mm -hmm. that there might be a lack in that in some girls because potentially they might not be having dads at home? Yes, yes, that's very correct um, because I've, I've noticed, like in the games that you've mentioned, there are some people that I would call that they were raw, like they couldn't filter, they can't filter their speech, yeah. like anything that they think, it just goes like yeah. that. So um, for me, it was like growing up, there were certain words that we'd never use at home, yeah. we'd never swear, we'd never talk back, at an act like when they're talking, you have to sit and listen, and then you need to respond only when you understand what they're telling you. Sure, sure. Yeah. So then my father is that type of person who would teach you something and then they will correct you yeah. afterwards, after they have taught you something. Oh, okay. So yes. the lesson comes and then when you mess it up. Exactly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's but you would make sure that he teaches you something first before they discipline you. <laughs> 
So I'm thinking now, when, when you're looking at, at, at as, as an active person, ministry that is, and I'm looking at it from, of course, we just spoke now about the sports perspective and how you realized, and potentially from your friends as well, uh, that you know what, you are potentially gifted and benefited to have had a dad permanently in your life and you've learned all these things. Now, when you look at your friends and you look at ex extending it now to the ministry, the ladies that you've been working with, the church that you've seen with the church, etc., would you say that there's something that you have as a benefit because you had dad at home the whole time versus when you look at them that, hey, more love? Yeah, obviously there will be something like that, especially when it comes to discipline. So yeah, yo, my father used to discipline us a lot. So there are some things that we knew we would say, hey, this one, it's a no-go area and this one you need to like, uh, if your father doesn't approve, then you know uh, it's a no-no. Yeah. So then when you look at other people, it's just like, they do as they please within the church so. yes there are some people like that they do as they please they don't know like they don't have that relationship with their father so obviously some of the teachings they they wouldn't have had them yeah and uh, would, would you mind pointing us perhaps to one or two of these things that you've picked up in all these years in your ministry perhaps that you would say especially like you mentioned discipline or is there anything else that you would say potentially that that says i can see because this person is doing this that they didn't have that good solid background and foundation from the bad headroom. Okay, it, I would say it goes back to, um, in a way, that a person responds. Um, growing up, we know that uh, you have to kneel when you greet adults, when you're serving food, you need to kneel down. But do some people do that. I don't know if they still do that. <laughs> but um, now you find. Um, some of the girls, when they talk to you, like, they're just holding their ways. They don't even care what they're doing. Like, yeah. They just respond anyhow. Yeah. And that, for me, um, is something that I also appreciate from my father because he would make sure that you sit with him and then you talk, you respond. Then when you're done, you can walk away. Yeah. And like, just walking away and responding as you go. Sure, sure. Yeah. So outside of uh, internal characteristics. You're talking now about bodily movements and taking care of yourself as well. Mm -hmm. That you have learned that portray and speak to respect and discipline mm -hmm. beyond, which means you can actually tell well, this one, just by the way they're acting, there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Mainly, uh, I find that some of them will grow up with grandmothers, so obviously they wouldn't, uh, the grandmothers will be soft in a way, but oh, my father was something else <laughs> so in as much as he would discipline you then he would also give you the teachings sure so yeah <laughs> and now i think now growing up in the church don't you think perhaps there was a bit extra pressure on you as the pastor's child versus the ordinary member in church in terms of how you behave and how you think how you are as a person obviously there is because everyone will be looking up to you so they say you must practice what you preach. So imagine but preaching. You are not preaching. Yes, but I was always with daddy when he was preaching. So they're like, it's one umbrella, <laughs> under one umbrella. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's one of those things that you say, okay, how do you speak to your person? Even your conduct, how do you respond? How do you do certain things? Like your walk in life, it also resembles a lot about your teachings and. Uh, the things that you've learned growing up yeah. so yeah <laughs> and, and, and that pressure I didn't try I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to think did it not make you feel like cracking at some point in time and the expectations that people have of you because of who your father is versus who you want to be for example there is that pressure yes but it didn't crack me because I think I've managed to stand up for myself because uh, people would say all these things and they expect me to be my father yeah. but at the end of the day i've stood up to say i am not my father yes i'm a pk but um he has taught me this he has taught me this but at the end of the day it also goes back to what is it that i want yeah, i'm just trying to think uh, as, as a result of you being a pk now <laughs> when it comes to that aspect of your life of you know getting married and finding somebody and you know just having a relationship wasn't there too much, you would say, pressure in that particular department in there, as a result of you being you know, the child of a pastor in church? There is, there is pressure, 
even now <laughs> there is pressure because um, they, there are some things that my father would always teach people say no if you want to get married this is how it's done this is not how it's done but yeah. the recommended way you need to uh, you don't have you don't need a child out of wedlock yeah. and all those things so um i would say so far i've done well <laughs> not to post or anything yeah. but yeah um i think his teachings are one thing that they, that still stand out for me so yeah i am here today because of all those teachings i would like you to speak to men out there who potentially have to find themselves in that space where your dad found himself when your mom left and they have to bring up these children on their own without the assistance of a mother or motherly figure in the house mm -hmm. what are the things they should be looking at looking at your experience and trying to look forward to the kids that are growing up now in similar circumstances okay um, um i must say well i was very young then but I uh, could feel the pressure from my, my father's side. You know, as a girl child, there are stages in life that you go through and you need a woman figure in your life. But having my father around when he was alone, there was no one else to take us through all those teachings for a girl child. So it was difficult for him but luckily enough, we had understanding people because of my father. He was someone that could relate well with people. So um, everyone just loved our family. Okay. So everyone would come and give us all these teachings, seeing that he's the only parent that sure. is there at that time. In as much as my mother was there, but she was not in the house with us, but okay. she was there, yes. So there are people around that would come and give us all those teachings specifically for a girl child. Yeah. Yeah. So that thing it took out the pressure from my father. Mm. So, so the encouragement therefore is try and find especially girl specific yeah. uh, topics or themes that they can then be taught outside. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Because I would say there are a lot of things that I've learned outside my family. Like, or outside uh, our home, like the family set up. So also interacting with other people in the neighborhood, then you will see that, okay, this ones they're doing things in a certain way, but, because obviously I would sit down and wait and say, okay, but what does the Bible say about this thing? You see, so now you're able to evaluate, to say, okay, this is right, this is wrong. But all the teachings, you get them from outside. And also from the church, uh, there are a lot of people that would uh, draw us closer to them yeah. just to give us all those teachings sure. because it was hard for him mm -hmm. alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm very grateful for all those teachings that we got outside from the family yeah. center. Yes, yes. No, that's good. That's good. And I think, right, and I think that the, the, the question that I always try to pose at the end of this show to people that come to Charlotte to give us their perspective is if you would take just the few minutes that we have left to imagine that everybody in the world was going to watch this video Every, this video is going to go viral, it's going to trend and everybody will see and hear what you're, what you're about to say right now what's the one thing that you'd like to tell the world at this very moment in time? Sure God loves you <laughs> I think that's what I would say yeah, stay blessed thank you for watching you put it for yourself. God loves you. God loves you and stay blessed. Thank you very much for watching another episode of Tower Tins. We look forward to seeing you again next week. This time, it's an adios from me. Thank you.